The first computer, ENIAC, ran on about 18,000 vacuum tubes, occupied 1,800 square feet of space, and had to be reconfigured every time it had to solve a new problem. Today, we are able to carry cell phones, which have about 120 GB of memory, can do multiple things at the same time while we are fighting strangers on the internet, and entertain us. This development is largely because of the hardware and the printed circuit board in specific. You would have definitely seen a printed circuit board lying around. It's a hard, mostly green colored panel with a lot of circuitry etched on it. It forms the skeleton of any electrical connections within a system. PCBs help couple all electronic components on a single platform and these are connected to one another through conductive pathways. When components such as resistors, capacitors and diodes are soldered onto it, it's called a motherboard. So what is a PCB made of? PCB is made of fiberglass reinforced on plastic boards. This is simply the blank circuit board that goes for printing the circuit. There are two kinds of PCBs, one-sided and two-sided. In one-sided, the circuit is printed only on one side and in two-sided, both. The circuits are printed using copper. Copper is used because it is a metal with high electrical conductivity. These circuit lines are called traces, roots or lines. There can be multiple layers of these lines or roots printed on a board and each layer is separated from one another using a thin non-conducting material. Next, the components are soldered onto the board and the ends are protected using a solder mask to prevent it from interacting with other components unnecessarily. The positions in which the components are soldered are called pads. These components can be connected to any layer inside the PCB and insulated from the rest of the layers, which is why the placement of the pads and the designing of the lines or roots is very critical because they need to accommodate the components required on each layer without interfering with the rest. If you want to know more about soldering, take a look at one of our earlier videos where we show how these components are actually soldered onto the board. The next step is labeling these components on the board. This process is called silk screen. Silk screen provides a description of the components on a PCB and helps users interpret the functionality of the board via numbers, symbols and letters. Depending on the functions and requirements, PCBs can be built with about 2 to 100 layers. If you are finding this hard to imagine, think of a PCB like a multi-story building in which various floors have offices that work independent of the other. There are a few things like the heating and ventilation system, electricity and water supply that all the floors will require in common. These can be placed either on the terrace or outside and routed through the entire building, customized for each floor. The placement of lights, air conditioning ducts, chairs, tables and cabins are independent of the floors. But what if two offices on different floors need to collaborate or they are part of the same organization? In such cases, these floors can be connected to each other via elevators. In PCB terms, these are called vias or vertical interconnect accesses. They connect different layers on a multi-layer PCB. A hole is drilled through the layers to establish a connection. Wires are categorized as through wires, blind wires and buried wires. Through wires establish a connection between the top and the bottom layer. Blind wires connect an exterior layer which can either be the top or the bottom to an internal layer and buried wires connect two internal layers with one another. They are called buried because they can't be seen from the outside. While PCBs are compact and durable, they can be quite hard to fix. Any components on the outside can easily be replaced, but any wear and tear on the inside cannot be fixed. Printed circuit boards are an integral part of everything we use today. From our watches, to our phones, to even our television sets. And they still have more to give. For example, PCBs can be 3D printed, they can be printed on flexible material and even be made biodegradable. We for one cannot wait to see what the future holds for the PCB.